The base of your roller coaster is limited to 12 inches by 30 inches. Foam core is an excellent material to use for the base. A good idea for the base is to draw a line one inch away from the edge all the way around the base. Now when you put the columns on and the diagonal supports, they'll go right up to the line and little flaps on the bottom of the diagonal supports and the columns will go right up to the edge of the base. So nothing will hang over and everything will be nice and rigid. The sharp turn is designed to nearly fit inside of the wide turn. This way you can have two tracks run side by side. If you're running low of columns or beams, you can always use them interchangeably. They're pretty much the same size. The beams just have lines on them and the columns don't. But otherwise you can exchange them if you're running low on one or the other. When connecting track, you don't just want to put the two pieces end to end. You want to overlap the track pieces. This will also allow you to adjust the length of it when you put it in place. So overlap the track pieces and put a lot of tape on both pieces. Here's what happens to a loop when it's not adequately secured. For this loop, I've secured the loop to a column and I'm starting the ball from the same height as before. This time it makes around the loop without any problem. When you're building your roller coaster, you're going to put some columns down on the base. So you're going to want to draw a one inch line around your whole base. Now this would make too small of a roller coaster. Yours will be bigger, but still draw a one inch line. And then all your columns will go right on the edge of that one inch line. So you know there'll be plenty of room for them to put the little tabs down and the diagonal supports.